It's crazy, isn't it? Have they got earths in these? They're all individually switched. This is what it's supposed to be like. You need to report this to the DNO. Look at that. It's obviously been caught on fire at some point. Hello and welcome back to Artisan Electrics where we're here today in this beautiful house. We're doing various bits and pieces here but the big theme of today's video is an epic board change. We're doing the consumer unit upgrade here but it's just it's not just one consumer unit, it's like five consumer units at the moment. It's a complete hodgepodge. One is very old, one is very new and there's a few others in between and what we're going to do is just upgrade them all into one nice neat consumer unit completely up to scratch with all the protection that's needed for our customers wiring. The guys are doing a bit of other stuff as well. We've got the whole team here today, Lee, Luke and John. So they're gonna be cracking on. Luke's doing some down lights behind me, as you can see. So hopefully it's an interesting little project to share with you guys. As always, before we get into it, smash a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let's go. One, two, three, four twenties. One, two, three, four, five, sixteens. Hey guys, get off the sofas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate, you right? Yeah, I saw. I was like, Bumps and girl, <laughs> 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 like, How did you get through it? <laughs> Six. Well, oh, there was all breweries. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it was like, there was all within a mile. Yeah. You just jump between them and they had like music on. Try and do the board today if you can. So this is why we always quote for an EICR and then a board change, because you never quite know what you're gonna come across when you're changing the board. And when, whenever we do an exception, it always creates problems. So we've allowed plenty of time. This is a, a big board change. We've got basically three or four little consumer units that are all gonna be consolidated into one double stack fuse box board. The idea is just get it all up to scratch, everything protected proper, properly, nice and neat into one board. But the, I've said to the guys, look, although we've not quoted for an EICR, just basically do an EICR before you get stuck in to do the board change. Because otherwise, if we find that there's loads and loads of issues, we might have to kind of rethink how we're gonna do this. Um, this one's obviously quite ancient and that's where the potential for issues are. The other board I think was just put in when they put the kitchen in. So that's just got some extra circuits that have been added later. But you've got a board here for the outhouse as well. And you've got a board here for something else. And you've got a little RCD for like a shower. So there's quite a lot going on here. So I think the first port of call is basically to go around and just do a test on all the circuits that we think might be a little bit dodgy like the old stuff. And then once that's done and we're confident that there's not gonna be any major issues or rewiring needed, then crack on with the board change. And I'm just here to, I'm just here to annoy the guys who are in. And they're gonna do, they're gonna do all the hard work. Wait, have they got earths in these? Yeah, yeah, it feels separate, C, C. Oh, one earth does all. <laughs> there's three of them for free separate. Yeah, I think that might be for those lights in the living room because we had some of those out before. And they're all individually switched, one light per switch. It's crazy, isn't it? Good dates on them because they look pretty well, old. First... Oh wow, yeah. They're yeah, they're turned they're... off, are not they? No, they're on. They're... Oh, what? oh, they're on. Yeah. Cop that <laughs> two pins. Weird. The... Smokes everywhere, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I oh, know. Before twenty twenty six. Yeah, looks can be deceiving. It's obviously just gone a little bit yellowy, but it's actually fine. Recessed. They're like really. Oh, they got them in here as well. Weird. They're out. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to install some kind of special bezel, like internal plastered in kind of bezel for them. But like, how do you how do you get them out without damaging the ceiling? This is a proud moment for me. My tools are coming out of the van and going to to venture out into the real world once again. I don't know if you've got one of these, but this tool makes doing these down lights an absolute breeze. So I'm gonna show you how I do them in like, in like 10 seconds. So what I do, I always, if you're taking old down lights out, I'll just, just cut the cable fresh like that. 
right? So you can use the little cutter bit on it to cut it fresh. And then you literally do that, do that, boom. It's just like a twin and earth cable stripping tool. It's a CK one, that. But, and then literally you've got your live earth neutral. Slide that over and then literally just line it up with the terminals and push. Yeah, no, that's it, boom. There right. you go. So, um, I just, I've done so many of these downloads over the years. And the only thing with this, which is slightly annoying, is that when you do it, all the bits go everywhere, um, which is why you probably should have a dust sheet down. But um, yeah, it's, it does make it super quick and easy. So this is tool of the day. This is the CK Twin and Earth Cable Strippers. Amazing for doing down lights with Twin and Earth. It just saves so much time. Link in the description below. I was just saying to Luke, like, when you pull the down lights down and stuff, you always get bits falling on the floor. And it's, I know you'll hoover it up afterwards, but it's easier if you just chuck a dust sheet yeah, down yeah. first. Um, it just saves you time cleaning up later. So. Yeah, no, I mean, we get, get, um, this one folded over. Get, uh, it's good. Yeah, just get two for each, each of you. Get four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're practicing <laughs> for our calendar pose <laughs> right now. The artisan calendar's going on sale very soon. <laughs> John's yeah. on the leaf. <laughs> <laughs>so in order to safely isolate to change a consumer unit sometimes we have to pull out the main fuse and this one as you can see has been completely uh, overheating so we'll probably need to report this to the DNO and um, get them to sort something out not quite sure why it's been overheating but you can see the difference this is what it's supposed to be like and that's what it is like so always worth um, reporting these kind of things but John is now <clears throat> doing my favorite role as an electrician he's uh, hiding in a small cupboard doing the consumer unit he's just breaking everything down at the moment taking things apart so I hand hand you over to him for this epic board change so we've got one two three four consumer units to consolidate into one uh, they're in varying ages, so they've gone in at different times. I'll report back to you if I find anything interesting. So this fuse we've just removed, it's an old fuse wire one. There is no fuse wire in there. So if I test it on continuity, got nothing. However, when we mega it, it's showing it's a near enough dead short. So there is something tracking across there. E5 do a video on phenolics. It's where the this baker light starts to carbonize and then it can conduct electricity over time. Uh, it's quite interesting, I've never actually seen it in real life, but you can see that's charred to hell, so something's happened there. Very nice. Okay, so we're just, um, we're just checking to make sure that we're not gonna have any issues with the power being turned off down here. We just wanted to make sure there's nothing important. There is a fridge freezer here, but if we leave it closed, it'll be fine. Like the thing that people worry about with fridge freezers is like, oh, it's gonna defrost if the power's off for, for a few hours. But it's not, if you leave it closed, they keep cold for quite a long time. Um, so the trick is just don't open them, leave them closed and you probably 24 to 48 hours, it'll be absolutely fine. Still got it. That was terrible. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh man, I'm awful. reach this one. Oh, that one's a bit black. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's a 
well as it's obviously been caught on fire at some point. But yeah, it's just hanging on by a strand. I'm surprised it actually still worked, which I'm guessing it didn't. Ooh. Uh, hanging on by a thread. What are you done? Holding a lighter on that? <laughs> so we're all ripped out now. Just trying to get everything prepped to get all the cables from down here, up and round and dressed in. So everything's gonna come top entry into the double stacked fuse box here. John's in the cupboard for, for a change. I've got some fresh air, so I'm just prepping everything for him, getting the trunking cut, cutting the slot in the top of the board, gonna stick some grommet strip on that. Just making his life a bit easier. It's quite a hectic one in here. He's got about four or five boards to put into one. So yeah, Luke was going around doing some of the downlights and things. And uh, yeah, I just thought the more bits I can get ready for John, then I can just pass it into him and he can mount it onto the wall. So just marking up the top of this, gonna angle grind that out, get some grommet strip on, and then he's here tomorrow to finish the board on his own, do some testing. So yeah, me and Luke are off to do a job over at a bakery in Cambridge, so that should be interesting. It's your food, I'm not getting it. It's your food. <laughs> he's gonna have to, no, you're gonna have to get it, mate. I ain't getting it. You're gonna have to. Mate, I'm growing. <laughs> Lee, your food's here. Lee. Lee. Can't hear me. Ah, oh. oh, see, that's what, no, I'll cut it that size, it's covered. Oh, John, that looks epic. Right, I'm just getting the IP box ready with the DIN rail. Where there was like three or four boards, they was all on different walls. I think John said the one on the left, he's gonna take some trunking up to the top and round to the new double stack. So one of them have got to be extended on the cables. So I'm just prepping this up, cut the DIN rail to size, putting all the DIN rail connections in ready for him cut the entries either side so he can just mount that on the wall and get it in ready. And this time we haven't made the mistake of using the earth connections because they actually carry the metal through onto the clip which clicks onto the DIN rail and it ends up shorting all the earths together. So we've just gone with the same plastic ones that we're using for the line. Um, so yeah, I'm just getting it all ready for him. And I think Luke's just gonna pop over and give Corey a hand for an hour because he's, called out an SOS to him. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stay with John and just try to do as much as we can in this cupboard. You see oh. me, like, it's like a hum. Look how covers its legs are. Yeah, I just, once I got this awkward bit, because I just got to marry up these bits of trunk Once in the box. Once that one's in, you could always put the old cables into the DIN rail connections, and it's a case of just running. It's only one. Oh, it might be a case I'm of sure. putting a little bit of metal band, like a loop inside. Well, I wasn't sure about that. It's not exactly an escape route, is it? But no. do you think just loosen these off and put a bit in? Right, so we've got the fuse board mounted and all the old cables in. Now we just need to extend. So we've got a DIN rail box there. All of these are going to be extended up and round. This SWA is going to be terminated and extended up and round. Hopefully we'll get all of that sorted today. So then tomorrow I can spend the day dressing all this in and getting all the power back on. The, uh, the client has gone away for a few days. So luckily we don't have to get the power back on tonight. Sixty-four and a half ish. <laughs> Sixty-four and a half, eighty-five and a half. Sixty-four and a half, eighty-five and a half. Yeah, and then I'll get this bit of lid on first, because then I've got to measure off of there, so it butts up nice. I've been left without my van. Luke stole it, so I'll probably be here till about nine o'clock when Corey's finished work. Very proud of John. Amazing job. It's not easy doing a board like this for various reasons. 
One is you've got old cables that you're working with, so you've got to try and either extend them or use the length that you've got, which sometimes could be quite limiting. But also they've had to extend a load of cables. This is a board that is combined, like three or four boards combined into one. So it's a really tricky one to do. And they had these singles as well feeding certain old circuits, which they had to figure out which wire goes with which circuit. Uh, unlike Twin and Earth, it's a little bit more complicated to figure that out. But he's done an amazing job. It looks really nice and neat. Um, and it's just cleared everything up. You know, you've got it at a nice height now. All the old stuff that was there, all the various boards that were there, all gone. Got a nice main isolator switch now here. And this box, in fact, we'll have a little sneaky look in here. This box is where they've extended from the old consumer unit. Uh, they've extended the cables up. So what they've done here is they've taken all the old cables that were coming into the old consumer unit and they've extended them all. It's quite a, a lot of work, but they've used these connectors, extended them all through to the new consumer unit. And uh, it's nice and neat here, easy to access all the wires and everything. So great job. So John, how do you think that board change has gone? Pretty well, I'm quite pleased with it. It's, um, it's took a while to do, to be honest, but all the cables, the original ones had nice length on them to dress them in, so there was no joints. That helps, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Yeah, no, no, those annoying through crimps to install. Nah. <laughs> Not that we would ever do that. <laughs> no, it looks really neat, mate. You've done a great job. So an epic artisan board change. Um, it's taken a bit of time, but we do it right. We do it properly and it'll all be tested out and safe and everything will be up to scratch by the end of it. So awesome job. And uh, if you are a viewer who needs a consumer unit upgrade, get in touch, we'd love to help. Let us know all your thoughts in the comments below. Would you have done this a little bit differently? What do you think? All of your thoughts in the comments would be lovely and like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps the channel to grow. And why not stay, grab a cup of tea and watch a couple of the other videos that are gonna pop up after this because we've got loads of epic content that you guys can enjoy. So sit back, relax and enjoy another artisan video. But thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Okay.